really, really close yeah. there. Uh, another the world right team, though, but getting second, what are your emotions after that? Um, a pretty, I guess, uh, no, one, no one likes to lose, but Craig's in phenomenal form. Um, I think I would, I would probably put him as the favorite coming into this meet just with how his outdoor season is going and, and compared to mine. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely happy to be on another team. Um, I'm more excited that uh, where I am right now and give myself another two more months to really prepare and, and know that um, I was so far t uh, behind to start the season that um, I think there's going to be a lot of guys, and I'm not, not talking Americans, but just uh, worldwide, probably coming back, I, I would imagine, um, with this late uh, World Championship. So um, I'll, be, I'll be certainly gaining steam. I'm more concerned about myself, worried about myself than, than others. But um, I, I promise you, if I, if I end up staying healthy these next two months, I'm going to be in pretty, pretty damn good shape. So I, I know you guys aren't training partners anymore, but it seemed like you guys were pretty close when you, when you both were at the Oregon Project. You happy for him that he got that? Yeah, of course. Um, Craig, Craig's a fun guy. Um, you, you could tell, obviously, the, before the race, just the, the audience he had and, and all of his fan base and friends and family that were in the stands. Um, and obviously, with his appearance, you could tell he's, uh, yeah, he, he, he has a very, um, I don't know, um, uh, it's not like a, your, your typical middle distance, distance uh, running personality. So I think it's, I think it's great. I think he, uh, he brings a, a different spin to the event and to the sport. And uh, but I'm overall, I'm just happy that I think it's his first outdoor title. So um, he, he'll definitely be a force for the the next few years. So can you walk me through the decision making on the lost lap? Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I think I tried. I didn't really try super, super hard, but I tried to kind of get the pole position um, right after the quarter. We were kind of arm checking a little bit, um, and obviously I, I knew it was going to be easy just to go around him. Uh, you know, he's a 144 guy right now, a couple weeks ago. So I didn't know really what, when I did that if I was actually going to think it was going to be that easy and, and get it, but I did know it was going to be pivotal, um, and I think that could have been the deciding factor right there. I mean, it was going to be hard for me to, to really get around him without making a, a really hard move somewhere in that last lap. And so, yeah, he just had the hole inside and forced me to run, um, you know, those extra few meters that um, probably made the difference for how many, I don't know how many hundreds of a second I was behind him. But um, he, made, he made a really good move uh, with 150 to go that I felt like... Um, to be honest, at that time, I was like, I don't. I mean, I could probably cover this and go with it, but I didn't know what that would uh, leave me with the last 50 meters, last in the last 100 meters, and I didn't know where anyone else was behind me. So I made the move to kind of let him go and see if other guys were coming on me, and, and that was kind of at the at that time I was like more of a I got to make this team than than go for the win. Um, and then with about 50 to go, as no one went by me yet, and I found kind of another gear and, and kind of started coming on him. Um, I think it showed uh, I probably should have relied a little bit more on my strength and gone with them. But, you know, um, I had to make that decision right then and there. And, and um, I thought securing my spot on the team was more um, pivotal than, than going for the win. Were you in the lead at the nah. bell? Or, no, you never got that. He, he always had the inside. I mean, we could have been neck and neck. I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, if I did have the lead at the bell, he still had the inside on me. So yeah. it didn't feel like I ever had the lead. Do you wish you had fought him harder for it at that point? No, because like I said, I, I don't I don't think I would have had, had to make a really, really hard surge. And... I don't know what that was going to lead me. I think I learned, and I think Blankenship learned. You know, we, we kind of did that game with each other in 2017, and that left that left me dry that last hundred. I only had so many moves that last lap, and I'm getting older, man. I'm just like, you know, with the, with the way I don't I don't want to say like I played conservative, but I definitely felt like I had to make sure I made that team more than than go for the win. Um, as you know, um, as I, I never like that position. I think the best way for me to make the team is to go for the win. But that was kind of what I decided at that time. How thankful are you to have your health? And Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I'm. I I think uh, since 2011, you know, I these these teams uh, I don't take for granted. You know, it's like. Um, every year it seems like to, to be getting harder and harder. Uh, my, fresh, my freshman year, my first year when I won out of college, so naive, kind of went into it, um, you know, just ex more excited at the opportunity. Now I'm like, not dreading it, but I'm more like, man, this, I don't remember this shit being so nerve wracking, you know? Um, but, you know, I saw Leo after the race was giving our awards and, uh, you know, I just told him like much respect for, you know, your longevity as I'm kind of realizing like just, you know, how hard it is to, to kind of continue making these teams as, as you get older. So um, I don't take this for granted, but we have a great team we're sending to Doha. And uh, I'm, I'm just like you said, I'm excited that I'm healthy right now and I'm, I'll be able to put in some really good training in the next few months. When we spoke at Pre, you hadn't been training under Jerry that long while you were healthy. What, now that you've had a healthy block, what is the biggest difference you've seen between him and Alberto's system? Uh, I mean, I think I think I kind of mentioned that Pre, just like, Felt like uh, he, Jerry's a little bit more conservative with kind of the speed, and he's a little bit more strength oriented. Um, I don't think we really have any. I can't remember any like 
workouts that are just dedicated strictly to speed, whereas Alberta, we had a, a lot more of those. So, um, yeah, Jerry's just a lot more miles without getting too much in depth. I mean, I'm training with the, the 10K and 5K US champs, so um, I think my strength is, is, is there, and I, I definitely have a lot of confidence moving forward with that. And uh, as I'm getting older, I think it's actually more beneficial for me to be in under Jerry with, with that kind of training as, you know, your, your legs don't move quite as um, quickly and, and they don't feel as uh, fresh as they did when you're just coming out of college. So. Yeah. I mean, obviously you just made the 15 team, but like, do you think about moving those 5K and like looking at what Lopez has done? Um, you know, I've always like tried to throw in a 5K uh, a season, even back when I was in college and with Alberto. And, um, you know, this year there weren't really too many opportunities as I started like a little bit late, but um, who knows, maybe maybe sometime this summer before Worlds, I might be able to find an opportunity to kind of get in one or certainly next year. But I think Jerry is definitely open to the fact of me, of, of me running one. In terms of me moving up, until I run a, a world-class 5K time, um, then I'll decide it. Who knows? You know, I could... There's guys like, I'm sure, like Willis, who thought he could pop a 13.05 at this time and, and finds, you know, maybe I might be the same way or maybe I go out there and I pop a 13 flat, you know what I mean? Who, who knows? So until, until I actually get a good one, then I, I can't really give you a, a definite answer about that. I wanted to ask about the American record. So I know the 1500, that have been like a target of you for a few years. Over the winter, it gets bumped down two seconds. I mean, what was your thoughts when that happened? Damn. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it it's definitely makes it a lot more uh, uh, out of reach, you know. Not many 327 races, um, and there's only been two Americans ever to break 330. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think uh, it doesn't change anything with, with me trying to run fast and not changing anything with my, my racing schedule, you know. But um, definitely, I would I would say the, the mile is more attainable now than the 15 res before. When it was 329, they were pretty equal, I'd say. So. Do you think that should be allowed to happen that, like, 15 years after the fact that's changed? I, I, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't spend too much time thinking about that. Um, I, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I didn't even when I just heard from other people. I didn't really see the the article and the reasoning behind it, so I can't give you. Uh, yeah, can't give you a, a great answer on that. So Central, did, did uh, seeing Leo and he's retiring? You you competed with him for so many years, and you know you were right there with London. Yeah. London, uh, does, does his retirement kind of give you perspective of how long you've been in this and how successful you've been for so many? Oh yeah, years? sure. I mean. Uh, <laughs> I think I told him right after the race, and, and one thing I noticed this year actually was looking at the start list on the 15, I think me and Ben are, are the two oldest now, and I'm not even 30 yet, so um, there ain't going to be much much guys now from here on into the rest of my career that are going to be entering these events that are older than me, so um, yeah, I think uh, it's kind of like a, I don't know, like a new chapter, so to speak, just kind of a new wave, new crop of guys coming up, and it's exciting, you know, uh, for me, just new competition, new faces, but um, it's bittersweet, you know. I'm used to coming to this meet, you know, seeing Bernard Legat, seeing obviously Leo, who's been a, a force in, in this event for since before I was even running competitively. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely different. Um, and like I said earlier, I, I definitely um, tip my hat off to him afterwards and kind of now as I'm, I don't know, I think this is my sixth or seventh consecutive team I made, I'm kind of like, hey, like I just understand like how, how difficult it was for you to make nine or however you made. So, yeah. Um, in 2015, there was a long break between USA's and Worlds. We'll have a similar situation there. It doesn't necessarily maybe apply, but 